Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. Uh, we are reading Spellbound After Midnight. Um, I just want to let you know a quick, um, if you hear some mistakes, I will say it correctly, but I'm not going to edit any of it out. This is more of a gathering. We're going to be authentic. Uh, it takes me a minute to get into the characters, so just give me a couple of videos and we should be going um so yesterday we met tessa daniels she is the witch kind of down on her luck right and then we met poor ella uh she is the one that was found not alive let's just say that right so she was the one that was murdered and then we met the nosy neighbor sylvia right what did you guys think of her and then detective derek who I'm not sure if I like it, <laughs> but you guys tell me. So, uh, welcome, welcome, everyone. My name is Cindy at Simply Cindy. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this video. If I could ask you guys to please like, share, uh, and subscribe, that kind of helps my channel. And if it kind of gives me feedback if you guys want to do this, because this is kind of veering away from uh, what I usually do. So on we go here we go to chapter four and again i don't know how many chapters we're going to do it just kind of depends on the time so it's usually going to be about an hour all right here we go chapter four you're going to melt it down the pawn shop owner inspected the ring with a small lens yep it's worth more as a scrap metal i'll give you 50 royal coins for it 50 my stomach sank. That wasn't enough for my finds. It's an antique. Can't you do better? <clears throat> he tossed the ring into the polished counter where it clattered to rest near a trace of, of silver trinkets. I already told you it ain't worth it ain't worth it. This here is what I call a sentimental piece. His thick mustache hid his lips when he grinned. You have my sentiments for how cheap it is. I narrowed my eyes at his joke and scooped up the thing. Cheap, my foot. It had value, sentimental or not. I couldn't let it go for 50. The moment the ring's metal touched the mark on my palm, it became warm. It was a pleasant feeling something i was growing used to like wrapping cold fingers around a steamy mug of tea all the way into town i tried to shake the tacky thought of profiting from ella's murder something strange had happened in my shop yesterday when i decided to sell it <clears throat> those icy words scrawled on the frosted window barely visible to the naked eye had me looking over my shoulder. I must have imagined them. It was probably a manifestation of my guilt or children playing pranks. The ominous phrase repeated over and over in my mind. Help me. I'll keep the ring, tucking it into my pocket. I reached for the bag at my feet. Will you take these instead? The knot inside my chest tightened as I placed a stack of worn books on the counter. They were my mother's, a collection that was slowly dwindling. The leather covers had darkened with age, and the parchment had warped through the years. A faint scent of musk clung to the pages, seasoning the spells, my mother had called it. Mostly, it just made me sneeze. The man rubbed the white whiskers on his chin and studied the volumes running his stubby fingers over the text. Now, these I can use. People like to dabble in tonics and they usually have no idea what they're doing. I'll mark up the books and they won't know the difference. <clears throat> A ghostly finger ran up my spine. Ugh. There were definitely generations of dead family which is cursing my name. How much for them? I can do 120. The man picked his teeth with a dirty thumbnail and then returned to inspecting the books. Ugh. <laughs> That's gross. 
Chris. I stifled a groan as he left a smudged fingertip on the cover. I want 200. 150. 200, and I don't place a curse on your establishment. He blinked in surprise. There was a beat of silence before he audibly swallowed. Adam's apple bobbing in his throat. Deal. He counted the coins, then yanked my mother's precious books from view. Another piece of hers gone. The only consolation was I'd made enough to pay my fines. Argus was a different story, a vision of me marching into the, the agency, slamming my money into Derek's desk and smugly walking out uh, flashed through my mind. The image morphed into his eyes, darkening in approval, a slow smile spreading across his lips. A hot flush scaled, sorry, a hot flush scalded my neck, and I shook the picture away. Why, for the love of spell books, did I care about his approval or the way he smiled? Yeah, girl, you already got it for him. <laughs> he had invaded my shop made my money problems worse, messed with my head and my plans, but he had smelled good. Oh, girl. <laughs> I clenched my fist. He didn't deserve a single thought, not even when I needed to earn a substantial sum before gang members started breaking down my door. If you have any more of these books, I'll gladly, the man stopped mid-sentence noticing my scowl. Well, if you change your mind... Hopefully, <clears throat> it wouldn't come to that. I had one other option, but it would mean admitting I'd gotten in over my head and ignored some helpful advice. If I remembered correctly, friends didn't let friends borrow money from gangsters. Too bad I hadn't listened. Slinging my own empty bag over my shoulder, I left the shop. I waited until the sun dipped low behind the buildings casting a deep purple glow across the sky. The streets emptied as the market closed. People headed home for dinner or holed up in taverns to wash down the day with a pint of ale. I cut through the shadowy alley on the outskirts of town and came to the entrance of a small dwelling. Candlelight flickered in the window of a second chance soul. It's called, sec sorry, it's called Second Chancel. Doing its be best to stave off the glowing darkness. As if on cue, the front door swung open, and a young woman charged down the flagstone steps into the street. Her long satin skirt rustled where it swashed around her ankles. She snapped her fingers at a waiting carriage. I might as well have been a lamppost for all the attention she paid me. As her carriage rumbled away, I retraced her steps and entered the shop. Swaths of colorful fabric hung from the ceiling of a cozy parlor. <clears throat> Pedestal candles shed their light over the intricate woven patterns. A multitude of flames created dance shadows that undulated on the wall, and in the corner a bowl of incense burned. The acrid smell filled my nose and made my eyes water. Come in, child. The spirit welcomes you. A velvety voice crooned from an adjoining room. A wall of hanging beads separated the two spaces, and I pushed through them letting my fingertips glide over their polished surface. The beads clinked together before swaying back into place. Seated behind an oval table, an ancient woman bent over a glass sphere. Her long fingers were curled at the knuckles. Stick straight gray, stick straight gray hair hung past her shoulders, framing her face of pale, wrinkled skin. Oh. She lifted her head and squinted through a pair of wire-rimmed obstacles. Oh, it's you. <clears throat> My lips flattened in disapproval. 
Honestly, Viv, I can't believe you're still pulling the scam. Look at you. That outfit is ridiculous. Vivian James shrugged and cracked her knuckles. It's realistic, though, isn't it? The wig is a nice touch. She curled her finger around a long gray lock. Don't stare at me like that. My last appointment had it coming. She was infuriating and refused to work with me, and I didn't look the part, as if my abilities depend on my age. She scoffed. Apparently, Vivian the crone sells better than Vivian the 20-something medium. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's why my grandmother does more business than me. That is true sometimes. I'm sure Winifred would be thrilled to learn you're using her likeness. Vivian resettled the spectacles on her nose with her index fingers. It's temporary and my grandmother is out of town on an extended trip. She'll never know. Oh, I bet she knows. She probably saw it in one of her visions. There isn't much you can hide from an oracle. Tell me about it. Try growing up with that woman knowing everything you're planning to do before you do it. Vivian pushed out of her chair and stretched her shoulders. Oh, do me a favor and close up. I'm done for the night. I headed back through the beads and turned the lock on the door. A sign hung on the window, and I flipped it over while Vivian droned on from the other room. You know, this disguise was worth seeing the look on Mrs. Saunders' face when I revealed the location of her dead husband's hidden funds. The Saunders' fortune? He must have had thousands stashed away. Oh, he did. But it's gone now. When he realized his wife cheated on him with his business partner, he spent it all. Tonight, I had the distinct pleasure of sending his widow on a wild goose chase, courtesy of her husband's ghost. He finally found the peace he needed to cross over, knowing all she finds, all she'll find is a buried box of receipts. Savage, I said, making my way back into the room. Vivian's wig rested on the wooden stand while she leaned over a porcelain basin, water dripping down her neck. Gone were the wrinkles, revealing smooth, youthful skin. Glossy raven curls spilled down her so shoulder as she scrubbed the age spots from her hands. Oh, well, that's pretty smart. <laughs> After wiping her palms with a rag, she stowed her spectacles in a drawer. I'm sorry, she, yeah, she stowed her spectacles in a drawer. The transformation was awe-inspiring. Vivian wasn't afraid to play dirty, even impersonating an old woman to serve the lingering souls who roamed the kingdom. The dead were big business, and she had a near-constant stream of clients. I didn't envy her gifts, though. I'd take magic over fulfilling a ghost's final wishes any day of the week. <clears throat> yeah, that's a thought, huh? Okay. So, so, how's the shop? She asked, resuming her place at the table. That's why I'm here. I sunk into the adjacent chair and rested my chin in my hand. I need a favor. Vivian's brown, Vivian's brown eyes narrowed. What favor? The truth sat heavy on my tongue. I need a tiny loan to pay back the cr a creditor? A loan? A second later, she gasped and slammed her palm on the table, making the glass fear rattle. Creditor my ass. Oops. You borrowed money from that loan shark, didn't you? What's his name? Um, Schmargus or something. A total crook. It's Argus, and you're right. I shouldn't have taken the money. But I was going to lose the magic shop and have the rest of my mother's things seized as collateral. I had no choice. A lump clogged my throat, making it difficult to swallow. I hung my head. There are fines, too, I mumbled. Fines? For what? A royal detective found a box of wisteria spinova powder I hid in the basement. He was less than thrilled about it. Why was there a detective in your basement? Peeking between the thick strands of my hair, I gave her a sheepish shrug. 
I might be involved in a murder investigation? Vivian's lips opened and closed like a gasping fish. I would have been... It would have been comical if I didn't already feel so lousy. Finally, she held up her hand. Hold on. Not the girl from the ball. The pang of guilt was back, laced with a healthy dose of self-loathing. Her name was Ella Lockwood, and she came to see me before the ball. All she needed was a gown and a pair of shoes. There didn't seem to be any harm, and she was going to pay me. It wasn't worth it to mention the carriage. Something told me exploding pumpkins wouldn't help my cause. <laughs> you used magic, didn't you? An illusion? I nodded, unable to meet her eyes. Tess, you know what happens when you try to cast illusions. Yeah, apparently people end up dead. That's not funny. Trust me, I'm not laughing. I blew out my cheeks. <clears throat> They've assigned a royal detective to the case. His name is Derek Chambers, and I can tell you right now, he doesn't like witches. One of my ancestors probably sacrificed his family's goat or something. Vivian tapped her trim nails against the table. Well, here's something you don't have to worry about. I haven't felt any new spirits in the last few days. Ella should have already crossed over. That's the other reason I'm here. A prickly sensation climbed the back of my neck, and I peered over my shoulder, searching the dark corners of the room. There had been part of me that hoped Vivian might be able to communicate with Ella. Maybe I could have told her how sorry I was for the way things turned out. You can relax. She's not here. If she crossed over, it's too late. I can't summon her. The dead hate to be disturbed. Now. If she's appro if she approaches us from the other side, that's a different story. Yes, very true. But as I said, Vivian licked her fingers, then held it up in the air, testing the temperature of the room. See? Nothing. We're alone. I know I said that's not true, but some of it, I mean, I said that's true, but some of it is not true. I, as a medium, I know, this is like interrupted, but I was just thinking, I, as a medium, have not had dead people or people that have crossed, like, be irritated because we, we're talking to them. So, yeah, maybe not. <clears throat> Sorry. Disappointed, disappointment nodded my, let me get back to it. <laughs> See? Nothing. We're alone. Disappointment nodded my insides, and I glanced at the symbols on my palm. I had thought maybe there was still a connection, and that was why the mark hadn't faded. What are you going to do about Argus? I missed a payment, and I'm worried he'll send his goons after me. I sold a few of my mother's books to cover the fines for illegal powder, so that's taken care of. How much more do you need? Vivian crossed the room toward a small cabinet inside. Inside, she retrieved a pouch full of coins which she pressed into my hand. Is this enough? It's a start. I'll repay you, I swear. Vivian snorted. Says the girl who borrowed from a medium to pay back a gangster. Keep it. That's what friends are for. <laughs> it's so true. I crushed her in a hug, fighting a rush of emotions. Sometimes it felt like she was all I had, and I hated that my problems became hers. Now, I could pay the fines and put the arrogant witch hating detective behind me then focus on getting argus off my back you're the best viv you know you are well if you plan on listing my superior qualities i won't stop you please continue you haven't even mentioned my flawless beauty and svelte figure i choked on a on a laugh and tucked the money into my pocket lightheaded with relief your ego can't handle it. <laughs> Probably not, Vivian clasped my shoulders and gave me a gentle squeeze. Be careful, Tess. This thing with Argus and now the detective, it's a mess. You need a ditch you need to ditch both of them as soon as possible. I know, that's the plan. 
through the windows. I could see the faint drizzle glistening on the cobblestone in the lantern light. The dark side, I'm sorry, the dark street was deserted, and it was a long walk back to the magic shop. Argus's men were probably roaming the alleys looking for me. I'd grown used to seeing them skulking around in my peripheral vision. Still, I couldn't risk spending any of my newfound wealth on hiring a carriage, not, not when I needed every royal penny. Viv, you aren't using the wig again tonight, are you? I asked with a smile. She wrinkled her brow. No, why? Do you want it? Vig plucked, Vivian plucked the wig from its holder and watched with a grin as I arranged the head of hair artfully over my own. How do I look? I posed, hunched over one hand on my hip. I think I wore it better, but it should keep anyone from recognizing you. Perfect. Pulling the collar from my cloak around my neck, I shuffled down the steps into the long night. Chapter 5 Wigs were the worst. Thick strands of hair fell into my eyes, the rest hanging on weighty clumps down my back as I hobbled blindly through the dark alley. Bile rose into my throat when a fury body darted past my feet and scampered into the gaping hole beneath a brick wall. A rancid odor of spoiled fish and salt was a pungent reminder I was near the docks, a playground for rats and larger, more dangerous creatures. Maybe I should have taken the hit and hired a carriage after all. Someone was close by, I realized, when an icy wind tunneled through the alley, carrying the ashy scent of cigar smoke. I braved a glance over my shoulder and caught the orange flash of embers before they dissipated. The urge to run barreled through me, but I maintained my limping gait. One more step, then two. Keep it together, Tessa. I repeated the mantra until my heart slowed down and my breath evened. See, nothing to it. Just a leisurely nighttime stroll through the kingdom's unsavory back alleys. A cat screeched from some hidden hovel. An answering howl sent the animal racing through the narrow passage. The cat had the right idea. I picked up my pace, dropping the limp when I heard the echo of footsteps ricocheting off the wall. My pulse pounded against my throat. While up ahead, a lantern cast a, war a welcoming pull of light. I dove for the beacon of safety. Its glow grew stronger, and then I reached out as if I could capture it and bring it closer. Before I could, rough hands clamped around my forearm and hauled me backwards. I clawed at my assailant, nails raking along the skin. His grip tightened, digging blunt fingers into my muscles and pinpoints shooting pain into my arm. He pressed me into the wall. The coarse brick scape sorry, the coarse brick scrapped my back or scraped my back, sorry. <laughs> the coarse brick scraped my back, catching on the fabric of my cloak. My shoe slid on a wet cobblestone. Fingers that reeked of cigar smoke covered my mouth. I screamed anyway, the sound of muffled moan in the back of my throat. Panic surged inside my body as the man's vile, alcohol-soaked breath filled my nostrils. All alone, witch? You shouldn't have missed a payment. A match scraped against stone. Sulfur scent scented the air, then a soft glow of lantern expanded in the space. I squinted from the sudden light and renewed my struggle, managing a well-placed elbow in the man's ribcage. He grunted, but didn't let go. My attacker moved to the side, and in his place another man came into focus. Argus? I whispered. Caught you, he smiled, and shadows danced beneath the sharp edge of his cheekbones. Thick ebony hair glazed the tops of his broad shoulders and curled behind his ears. He had youthful, ruggish features, but the rigid set of his jaw and apathy lurking in his green eyes spoke of suffering beyond his years. Trying to avoid me, witch? You haven't paid me yet. 
it offends me that you're evading our agreement. I'm a businessman, not an animal. He steely gaze, his steely gaze flicked towards the man holding the, me captive. The corner of his lips hitched. He's the animal. Try to stay on his good side. I'll get your money, I said be between clenched teeth. Argus lifted his shoulder. His leather coat stretched over the lean muscle. Everyone says that. I just need more time. He chuckled and looked around like there was a larger audience. Everyone says that, too. So unoriginal. His hand moved towards my neck, and I flinched, expecting his lethal fingers to tighten into a stranglehold. Instead, they rubbed the strands of the wig that had torn loose from my head and gathered in an awkward pile on my shoulder. Points for the disguise. I don't see that every day. But you weren't wearing it when you visited your friend. Did she give it to you? Did she give you anything else? Money, perhaps? Maybe I should speak to her about your mispayments. Argus burned my gut. Leave her alone. She's not involved in our deal. Argus pressed his lips toward, together, impatient narrowing his gaze as it traveled down the length of my cloak and honed on my pocket. What a pity. I wouldn't mind getting to know the ghost hunter a little better. His hand dripped into my pocket and withdrew the coins I'd deceived at the pawn shop along with Vivian's share. He stuffed them into his jacket, then sent me a devilish wink. I'm not above picking pockets. It reminds me of where I came from. This buys you more time, but now I want your entire loan paid by the end of the month. End of the month? You can't do that. I twisted his goon's hold, winching my, wincing as I twisted in his goon's hold. Wincing as pain shot through my arm, Argus laughed and disbelieved ting his voice. Is she serious? Does anybody read the fine print? Which? I can do whatever I want. You signed a contract. A shrill whistle pierced the night, and Argus glanced over his shoulder as footsteps started to pound along the alley. Someone's coming, the thug muttered, loosening his grip on my wrist. Pinning me t with his gaze, Argus warned, I want it all by the end of the month. I told you, it's not enough time. End of the month, he growled, moving past me and vanishing into the shadow. Alone in the alley, I shrank against the building to make myself invisible. I was tempted to follow Argus, unsure whether I should face the advance, the advancing stranger better the devil you know. Light poured into the narrow space, and the footsteps halted. Detective? What are you doing here? I pushed away from the wall and moved into the inviting glow. Fear drained from my body, leaving me hollow and unsteady. Derek Chambers stepped in front of his patrolman. His gaze traveled over my disheveled form, lingering for a moment near my jawline. Heat flushed my cheeks as I realized the tangled strands of the wig that were stuck to my chin. I tugged the offending piece from my head, leaving my drizzled damp hair hanging past my shoulders. As the corner of Derek's mouth kicked up in amusement, I finger combed the mess back into place. So much for the disguise. What had worked for Vivian had utterly failed me. Mortified, I considered using magic to create a crater in the ground big enough to swallow me whole. <laughs> Poor thing. The only saving grace was that behind Derek's, Derek's frank enjoyment was a hint of concern. That softening took, that softening look tightens something in my chest. I needed to squelch the emotion, or I might think he cared. My hand balled into fist. Were you having me followed? 
I thought I should. After a discussion, after our discussion yesterday, you seem like a runner. He eyed the wig, which resembled a ball of snarled yarn rather than a hairpiece. Out came his notebook, and the impulse to rip the page from his fingers to see what he wrote down raged inside me. But giving into temptation would only reveal my curiosity. Stay out of my business, detective. He grabbed my arm as I swept past him. Pain exploded in my wrist when his hands clamped over the spot Argus's thug had injured. At the sound of my hoarse cry, he, his grip gentled, and he snapped his fingers. The man holding the lantern loomed closer. Derek eased the sleeve of my cloak up to reveal an ugly welt and traced his thumb over the edge of the darkening bruise. The soothing touch should have calmed my tension. Instead, it ratcheted it higher, making the air thick inside my lung. All amusement faded from his face, replaced by the rigid determination. I couldn't deny the flare of pleasure it gave me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you get a good look at him? The fury in his tone tightened my throat. It would be so easy to tell him my problems. I almost believed he would solve them. I imagined my bending over my knuckles and pleading to rid the kingdom of anything in my way. A knight in shining armor fantasy that would was about to was about as real as my illusions. Derek had followed me because my shop was one of the last places Ella visited. He didn't trust me, and he wasn't interested in any troubles unless they related to catching a killer. <clears throat> a strained silence hung in the air while he waited for my answer. His men had backed away, leaving us on the fringe of the dim light. I tugged my arm from his grasp, feeling the loss of his touch more than I should. It was too dark. As I lowered my sleeve in a jerky motion, the wig fell, landed in the wet slap in a wet slap against the cobblestone. They ran off when they heard you coming. I suppose I should thank you for the, your good thing or your good timing. No thanks necessary. It's what you do. Yeah, I remember. I grumbled, mimicking our prior exchange. He bent to retrieve the wig. It looked like a mangy it looked like a mangy animal in his large hands. What had I been thinking were in such a thing? I could explain the disguise. I think you should. I fumbled for a suitable story and settled on something resembling the truth. I went to visit a friend, and as you know, this part of town can be dangerous for young women at night. It was a silly idea, but I thought I'd be safer. Respect your elders and all that. I see. Except the skepticism that flashed across his face, he really didn't. Not that I could blame him. It was ri a ridiculous explanation. I half expected him to put me in cuffs for impersonating an old woman. Was that a crime? Unlikely. But knowing Derek, there was probably a fine. Am I free to go? I asked. He hesitated as if he had more to say, then gave me a swift nod. Abrams. Derek barked over his shoulders. Escort Miss Daniels back to her shop. I don't need an escort. He ignored my comment and edged closer until the same woodsy scent he wore during our first encounter flooded my senses. Damn him for smelling so good while I definitely smelled like a dangy or dank alley. <laughs> Bending his head, he spoke near my ear. I expect to see you in my office to pay your fines this week, Miss Daniels. He wasn't going to let me forget those. He might have dazzled me with his concerned and pleasantly scented cologne, but they were just a distraction from the truth. Argus had taken all of my money and upped his deadline, which meant I needed a new plan. I'll be there, detective. I always pay my debts. My confident smile felt, felt plastered on, and I had no idea how 
to accomplish what he asked. I retrieved the wig and brushed past him, head high, shoulders straight, wig trailing in the gravel behind me like a dejected tail. My escort hurried to catch up. I studied the young officer Derek had assigned. He didn't look like he could take a bribe. Not that I had much to bribe him with, but he might provide an angle that would help me deal with the stubborn detective. Keep your friends close and your detective closer. After a few blocks, I offered him my most charming smile. So, tell me, Abrams, what's it like working for that detective, Chambers? A mile later, I had my answer. I'd also learned a valuable lesson. Don't ask questions you don't like the answers to. According to Abrams, Derek was a paragon of the community. His key qualities were solving crimes, helping old ladies out of carriages, and donating to kingdom charities. The list went on and on. He came from money, his family owned a fancy estate in the country, and he'd risen through the ranks to become the youngest detective in the kingdom or the kingdom had ever seen. If Abrams told me the man spent his weekends re up oh, sorry. If Abrams told me the man spent his weekends rescuing kittens out of trees, I'd have kneeled over and rolled my eyes so hard. Overachiever, I muttered, kicking stones in my path. What was that? Abrams paused in his praise of the famed detective. He's achieved so much, I answered, my voice noting nothing but sugar. Abrams nodded, and a tangle of curly hair fell across his face. His woolen cap struggled to contain the unruly strands. He unlatched the gate leading to my shop, and his eyebrows drew together when he spotted a bruised lamppost. A busted lamppost, sorry. Is everything all right? What, the lamppost? I chuckled. A delivery cart backed into it. Drivers these days, huh? Anyway, you were telling me about joining the agency? Yes, well, Detective Chambers took me under his wing. I'm only a rookie officer, but he lets me help with cases. I plan on being a detective one day. Youthful ambition flickered in his eyes, and I felt like a heel for wishing I could knock Derek off his pedestal. That's very admirable, Abrams, I yawned, Ugh, as a wave of exhaustion washed over my body, muscles and joints sore from my encounter with Argus and his henchmen. It had been a rotten couple of days. Everything I'd touched had ended in disaster. Ella was dead, my money was gone, and it seemed that by the end of the month, I'd be out on the street. It was as if my future at magic had bled into every corner of my, sorry, it was as if my failure at magic had bled into every corner of my life. My mother would be so proud. Thanks for walking me home. It was unnecessary, but I appreciate it all the same. It was my pleasure, Miss Daniels, but I disagree. It was necessary. A young woman shouldn't walk alone at night, not after the murder. You're probably right. I hesitated, curious to see if he'd be as free with information about the case as he had been with the detective. Did you attend the ball? Were you there when they found her? Abrams tore off his cap and twisted it, twisted it in his hands. Yes, everyone at the ag agency was invited. He leaned in on the uh, gatepost and lowered his voice. The clock struck twelve, and not ten minutes later, the courtyard burst open. You could hear the screams over the orchestra. Who found her? A young couple taking a stroll around the garden. We cordoned off the fountain and wait, waited for Detective Chambers to arrive. I thought he was already there. Oh, no. He made an appearance to satisfy his superiors, but he left early. If you ask me... He's afraid of getting roped into any arranged marriage by association. Abrams laughed softly. His fingers clenched around his cap. 
I've never seen a room filled with so many opt opportunistic social climbers before. Isn't it every young woman's dream to marry a prince? It doesn't seem to be yours, Miss Daniels. Me? I scoffed. Hardly. They look like more trouble than they're worth. Besides, I don't think the royal family would let me practice magic in the Great Hall. Abram flattened his lips and to contain his grip. Detective Chambers was right. You are different. Different? I guess a witch has to take any compliment she can get. I'd say it's high praise coming from a detective. Abram secured the hat on top of his head, then stuffed his hands into his pockets. I should return to my rounds. With his chin against his chest and his boots cuffing the dirt, he seemed embarrassed, probably realizing he's spoken out of turn. Of course, have a good night, Abrams. What a strange evening. <clears throat> Inside my shop, I pushed the door closed and hovered near the threshold. Abrams' unexpected reveal echoed in my mind. Derek thought I was different? Huh. What had I expected? The comment was, no. You're a ravishing beauty, or you have a stunning intellect? But it was something. Better than being called a fraud. I smiled as I trudged towards the kettle. A feat that seemed impossible considering my circumstances. Water sloshed in the pot as I swung it over the grate in the fireplace. A few pieces of kindle and a couple of jabs with the iron poker stoked the dying embers to life. The fire crackled and the scent of smoke wafted in the air. I stumbled into the chair and waited for the water to boil. It had felt like ages since I'd last slept, but even so, my body hummed with leftover energy. Tomorrow, after a good night's sleep, I'd find a way to come up with the rest of the money. But for now, a cup of tea liberally laced with my mother's famous sleeping powder would help to put the entire night behind me. A witch needed her beauty sleep. Unskilled witches needed twice as much. Unskilled witches hounded by thugs and overreacting detectives. Well, they needed to be put into the powder-induced coma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. I prepared the tea from memory, dropping a pinch of powder into my cup. Mint leaves followed, breathing the fragrant steam. I took a tentative sip that warmed my insides. Oh, I know, everyone can take a sip of their tea right now. It's so nice and warm. I'm taking a sip of mine, too. Mm. Yes, very nice and warm. It's cold today here. Okay, back. Sorry. <laughs> Waves of heat from the fireplace soothe my aching muscles and dry, damp hair. The potion took effect. And soon, sleep wove its tendrils around my body. My head lulled to the side. It was as my eyes were closed that I heard a faint rustling sound, like leaves scattering across the beams. The temperature plunged, and I shivered. Something was wrong. Struggling to stay awake, I peeked through the heavy, through heavy eyelids. A figure moved into my line of vision, but it was too late. The sleeping powder dragged me under the sh and shrouded my final thought in a dreamy fog. Oh, that wasn't good. I woke to darkness. The grandfather clock chimed, and I pressed my fingers into my eyelids to relieve my blurred vision. It was freezing. With a shudder, I glanced to the fireplace to find the embers still glowing. It shouldn't be this cold. My breath expelled with white puffs made visible by the strip of moonlight. A strange sensation flowed through my body as I remembered the eerie feeling of being watched before falling asleep. Was someone inside my shop? My heart pounded faster when the clock continued to chime. At twelve, at the twelfth bell, it stopped. I held my breath. Nothing moved. A strangled laugh caught my throat. 
I was being ridiculous. Then from behind, a bottle dropped from the shelf and rolled across the wooden beam. I froze, too afraid to look. Is someone there? My voice crackled. A fear grew like vines around my ankle, rooting me to the floor. A burning pain sliced through my palm. The tattooed symbol were glowing. Help me, came a soft whisper. My chest constricted. I turned to the rasping sound, unable to blink. I watched a shimmering figure float closer. The woman's hair flowed around her face as if she were underwater. She wore a ball gown studded with silver beading. I knew that gown. I knew the face. I finally blinked, hoping the specter would vanish, and was horrified, yet slightly relieved when it didn't. Ella, is that you? The woman nodded. Her image wavered as she drifted in to the shaft of moonlight, almost becoming one with the bright beam. Her lips parted, and she whispered again, I need your help. Ooh. <laughs> Chapter 6 Open up! Vivian's door vibrated where I pounded my hand against it. Eventually, light appeared at the window, and she arrived robbing, rubbing her sleep from her eyes. The latch turned with an audible click and I charged into the parlor, sending Vivian back onto her heels. What are you doing here? It's after midnight. She tightened the belt on her silk robe and stifled a yawn. <sighs> I ignored her question and searched the shadow. Had Ella followed me? My muscles burned and my side ached from running the entire way into town. I hadn't handled the situation at my shop well. Then again, what was the proper reaction when you came face to face with a dead girl fainting into the pile on the floor had been a real concern i might be best friends with a medium but i'd never actually seen a ghost what are you looking for pushing through the beaded curtain i stopped vivian bumped into me not not what who over over there she stilled her gaze landed onto the ghostly woman dressed in the ball gown. Is that who I think that is? That's Ella Lockwood, the girl I told you about. I don't understand. Can you see her? A hint of hysteria tinged my voice. Not only can I see her, she spoke to me. An actual ghost. See-through and everything. This isn't happening. I need to sit down, but she's too close to the chair. Vivian pressed a slender hand to her throat. She can't hurt you. The poor thing is more scared of you than you are of her. You seriously underestimate the horror of seeing dead people, I whispered. What do we do? Make her go away, Vivian rolled her eyes. Tess, you can't snap your fingers and get rid of a ghost. They have to leave on their own when they're ready. My entire line of work is based around that concept. That's why I'm here, I ground my teeth. Do you do the thing you do with your customers? It's not that simple. She approached Ella slowly, holding up her hands as if nearing a skittish animal. I excuse me, Ella. Ella, right? You need to walk towards the light. Everything will be okay. Ella stared blankly at us. Her form was faint, a faint flicker in the dark room. She gestured with her pale hands. There isn't any. Vivian's brows creased. There's no light? Ella shook her hand, her head, sending her blonde curls swirling in the air. I tapped Vivian on the shoulder. shoulder. Is that bad? It's not ideal, she responded under the, her breath, pulling me aside while Ella drifted over the floorboards, intrigued by her shelf of colored meditation m medallion sorry <laughs> i'm used to say meditation intrigued by a shelf of colored medallions i watched out of the corner of my eye afraid to lose sight of her she has unfinished business doesn't she i asked murder victims usually do 
A light won't appear until she's found peace. What I don't understand is, how can you see her? It's rare for someone who isn't a medium. Often people can sense a spirit, and we attribute that kind of experience to a haunting. But it's unusual for non-mediums to see them, let alone hear them speak. I opened my palm, revealing the ring symbols. This might be why it's a spell marker. They're supposed to fade when the illusion does, but Ella was cut short. If she died while under my spell, it could explain why there's a connection between us. Oh, that makes sense. Vivian bit her lip and thought, mm, a medium's purpose is to help the dead. Witches help the living, but the lines got blurred and your magical link wasn't severed with her death. Hmm. Your connection might be what's keeping her tethered to the side, which means if you want her gone, you'll have to help her again. Another complication. Between Argus, the detective, and now Ella, I was giving black cats and broken mirrors a run for their money. When did she first appear? Midnight? After the final chime. Vivian nodded. Time of death. It's when her ghostly form will be strongest. As the night wears on, she'll fade, but she'll appear once her essence grows strong again. This was insane. So, what does she need to cross over? I asked anxiously. A chance to say goodbye to her family? A letter to her lover? What? A frigid chill flowed through my body, and I let out a strangled cry as Ella's haunting face appeared inches from mine. I need you to find my killer. Vivian chuckled. You asked. <laughs> Moving away from us, and she picked up a tea set and placed it on the seance table. Pulling out the chair next to her, she patted the cushion. Here, Ella, you can levitate on this one. She poured herself a cup of cold tea and added a spoonful of sugar, leaving mine unsweetened before nudging it across the table. A witch, a medium, and a ghost try to solve a murder. It sounded like the beginning of a joke, yet... <laughs> That was what Vivian expected us to do. I took the final chair with a reluctant frown, and Ella's gaze connected with mine. I felt a pang of sympathy. Why had she been killed? Was it a random act, or something more sinister? Knowing the answer wouldn't make the outcome any better. A woman's life had been cut short. Her plans for the future all her hopes and dreams stolen by a faceless monster. Vivian wrapped her knuckles on the table, bringing our gathering to order. Ella, I know you must be frightened and probably a little confused. My name is Vivian James, and I am a medium. I work with ghosts who find themselves unable to cross over. We can help you transition to the other side. It won't be easy, but we'll do everything we can to simplify your journey. Ella rubbed her bare shoulders. She appeared so vulnerable, hunched over the table. I feel strange. It's like walking from a dream and not knowing where you are. Tell us everything you remember, Vivian said. Ella's brow crinkled. I hardly remember anything. There are holes where memories should go. She paused, arranging her thoughts. It's odd. I, I know what I have to do, but I don't know how to do it. Vivian nodded and moved her chair closer. That's perfectly normal. A ghost's memory is intertwined with their death. The most horrific, the less they can recall. I've seen ghosts who can't remember their names and others who can recite what they ate before breakfast when they were ten. Ella closed her eyes. I remember flashes, beautiful gowns, dancing. Her lips trembled as she continued. A clock tower, fear, so much fear. Her eyes opened and they were filled with confusion. How did I die? You drowned, I said in a hushed tone. Oh, I don't remember. You probably feel disassociated 
like your death happened to someone else. That's normal, too. It doesn't mean we can't help, Vivian said. That's right, I added, trying to sound reassuring. The royal family assigned a detective to your case. He seems very... I paused. What was I supposed to say? I couldn't tell her what I really thought. Besides, my feelings for the man had no bearing on her on his qualifications. He seems very capable. He does? Hope colored Ella's voice, making it rise in pitch. Mostly, I fumbled for something to add and questioning my sanity. What did I know about solving murders? I wasn't good at my job, let alone someone else's, and yet Ella's circumstances struck a chord with me. She needed to help now more than ever. I couldn't turn my back on her, even if the urge to stick my head in, a, in the sand seemed like the safer bet. An odd fascination gripped me. What would happen if I saw this through? I had to admit, I was scared to find out. Everyone always told you to face your problems. But no one ever mentioned what to do if you failed at that, too. Yeah, really. You know, there is one thing I remember, Ella smiled, in action brightening her features, making her appear almost human again. Vivian latched onto the excitement. What is it? Ella pointed at me, and dread blossomed in her chest. Were you able to get all the pumpkin pulp off of your lawn? She asked. Droplets sputtered into the tabletop as Vivian cho choked on her teeth. Pumpkin pulps? <laughs> Ella grinned. Ella's grin widened. Tessa tried to turn a pumpkin into the carriage and it exploded. There were seeds and goo everywhere. It figured that would be her one remaining memory. The only witch the only witness to my garden mortification and even the erasure of death couldn't keep it hidden i pursed my lips in irritation yes well most of it's still there i've been busy i see vivian fiddled with the shells the sleeves of her robe but i knew she was trying to restrain a giggle let's stay focused on the murder shall we whose ella's or the pumpkins, Vivian teased. <laughs> My eyes narrowed into sits. Ella's. Vivian winked and pushed out of her seat. In that case, there might be a way we can help solve Ella's murder and get the money you need to pay Argus. Don't forget my fines. I thought you had enough, of the, uh, enough for those. Vivian crossed her arms over her chest. I did, but I had a run-in with Argus after I left the shop. Also, fun fact, your wig was useless. It's now ruined and smells like a wet animal. Vivian's tissed, glan tissed and glanced at Ella. That was my favorite wig. She dug into the drawer on the other side of the room and pulled out a scroll. A royal messenger delivered this today. I'm supposed to hang it in the window. Unfurling it on the table, she placed the candle at each end. Ink-stained calligraphy covered the parchment. I read to the bottom and realized Vivian's intention. You want me to collect a reward money? Exactly. The royal family is offering a fortune to anyone who helps capture Ella's killer. <clears throat> wow. That person could be you. There's just one part you won't like. I drummed my fingers onto the table. It wasn't a bad idea. The money would solve my problems, and Ella would find peace, the peace she needed to cross over. What's the part I won't like? You'll need to help you'll need help from the royal detective. I slammed my teacup against the table. Absolutely not. Dark liquid spilled over the rim, pulling onto the glass. I have no intention of asking that man for anything. He's smug thinks he knows everything, and gets a distinct pleasure from ordering me around. Ella bit the side of her lip. I thought you said he was capable. Capable? My foot! He's your only option, Vivian cut in. She checked items off her fingers. 
let's see. You don't have access to the castle, so you can't visit the crime scene. He's already suspicious of you, so the moment he gets wind, you're questioning suspects. He'll be even more suspicious. She wiggled her third finger. And you have literally no experience solving crime. None. Oh, is that all? I drawled, sliding my fingers tipped through the puddle of tea. The fragrant liquid bubbled at my touch and evaporated. Ella's eyes widened at the simple spell. I have a few cards up my sleeve. Detective Chambers doesn't have magic at his disposal. Vivian smirked and pointed to my neckline. Neither do you. Not good magic, anyway. I glanced at the tea stain soaking the front of my dress. Damn. I'd crossed the evaporation spell with a relocation spell. The tip of my ears heated as I brushed uselessly at the wet fabric. So much for proving a point. Professionals help might warrant after all might be warranted after all. Poor thing. <laughs> Poor Tessa. Alright. How do I convince convince Detective Chambers to let me investigate the ca case. He won't welcome me with open arms and spill his secrets. Neither woman answered. The clock on the mantel ticked off the uncomfortable seconds. Vivian squirmed in her seat and rubbed the back of her neck. She had nothing. Well, this was your brilliant idea, Viv. I slumped in my chair. Ella broke the silence. Use me. What do you mean? I asked. I may not remember much, but he doesn't have to know that. There's got to be some detail they didn't release from the public. When he realizes you can see my ghost, he'll have to let you help. She drifted into the pool of candlelight, and her gown sparkled, giving off an ethereal glow. The hemline ended at her ankles, where a crystal shoe poked out from the underneath. A single shoe. My gaze snagged on the translucent slipper. I recall the details of details Sylvia had mentioned. She discussed the fountain and the rose left behind, Ella's fingers, but nothing about the missing slipper. I have an idea, I pointed to Ella's feet. You're only wearing one shoe. The other must have come off during your struggle with the killer. Do you think that's important? Ella lifted a hem of her gown and stuck out her foot. It might be if they didn't find it at the scene. Either way, it's information I can use when I visit the detective. Vivian looked skeptical. What? You said I needed Derek's help, so why the face? It's just telling people, especially people in authority, you see ghosts doesn't always go the way you'd expect. He might react poorly. Her voice faded and she bowed her head. I knew that look. I'd seen it before when we were young and Vivian had learned not everyone appreciated her ghostly calling. It was a lesson that still gave her nightmares. He might think I'm crazy. Vivian fidgeted with her handle with the handle of her teacup, unable to meet my eyes. He could have you committed. There are worse places than prison. It won't come to that. My gut churned. Our entire plan rested on the whims of a man who already found me lacking. There was a high chance I'd be leaving his office in some form of resist of restraints. I didn't like the odds. Not one bit. All right, everyone. We're going to stop there. Thank you for joining me please be sure to like share and subscribe and i will see you in a couple days or a day bye